what I want to share with you all is I've been brought up around animals, with animals. And sometimes, uh, you know, we say we are speechless or we are not able to articulate what we feel. Because I think language is is one of the lowest form of communication and that's that's what I learned from animals. They don't have to say anything. They don't have to utter a single word. They can't, that's a different thing, but they don't have to. Maybe they are the enlightened, evolved species amongst us and we are lucky to have them around. Um, that's what it is. I, I had the fortune of being around so many beautiful people right now. Still, I live with, I have a dog, her name is Lado, I have a cat, her name is Meena Kumari, there's another he cat, his name is Guru, so Meena was rescued, she was about to, you know, pass and she was, she was in a very, very bad state, but we got her home, a lot of my friends told me she might not survive, but uh, with a lot of love and care and, you know, just being around her, she's there, she's thriving, she's not just surviving, she's thriving my place and uh, you know there's a beautiful meme which which was just pretty much going around all over kutte ki tasveer hai and the dog is looking at the human and the dog says you know this guy feeds me looks after me loves me this must be god <laughs> and then you have it from the cat's perspective this guy feeds me loves me looks after me i must be god <laughs> So I try to find a very beautiful balance between the cat and the dog. I have one dog and two cats at home. I remember there's this very interesting story. Uh, so I live in this place called Juhar Sovalink Road. And I went out for my usual run in the morning. And I see this small little puppy filled with maggots. And I somehow felt I need to pick her up. I got her home and a couple of people told me she might not make it. We immediately took her to the vet. And thanks to social media, I put up a story saying, listen, this is what it is. She's recovering. I think, I'm pretty sure that she'll be fine within a couple of weeks. But I already have three babies at home, so I won't be able to look after her. As the luck would have it, so many people came and met and nothing worked out. This one guy came, he just uh, adopted Gudia. And Gudia, who was living in Juhar Sovaling Road, right, right now she's in Himachal. And she's looking after sheep. And she's become a pahadi dog. So, kahan se kahan zindagi leke jati hai. And that is the beauty of adoption. That is the beauty of... Uh, I, I feel when, when you're rescuing an animal, it's, it's not about you're rescuing the animal. You're rescuing yourself. You're trying to fix a broken part of your own self. And we all are broken in some way or the other. Some have b bigger gaps. Some have smaller gaps. But we do. And uh, as they say, that's where the light comes from. And you need to let that light come in, in your heart and uh, give these beautiful people, these beautiful animal space in your own house. Uh, if I'm talking about from economical point of view, I've had, you know, uh, dogs which are from breeds, which Labrador loved with my dog, but uh, then I've had Indy dogs as well, Indy cats as well. I can vouch for one thing that uh, the maintenance cost of these uh, indie breeds is comparatively really less. They don't shed a lot of hair. They don't need all your... Uh, at the cost of sounding a little insensitive, they don't need a lot of uh, financial investment to look after their health and you know the way they look and everything. So when you adopt an indie, first of all, uh, the breeding hoti hai, kahin na kahin, you're breaking the chain over there and the second thing you're just picking up a kid from the street and giving that kid a lot of love and looking after him or her and you make your family a beautiful space which has already been beautiful so yeah